based on what we've seen so far in terms of performance, right? Like it's always, you're more likely to to look a little bit more with positivity toward the team that's up 2-0 and has done exceptionally well. And the thing is, when you think about it, if Bet Boom don't blow us away in the draft, then you've got to be concerned already, right? If they don't like trick Falcons or catch them off guard or get something where we're like, wow, Bet Boom really solved it here, then it doesn't necessarily inspire enough confidence. That's not to say that they can't win any given game, because I still think they can. I think the previous games in the series were winnable, but Falcons are extremely stable. And Bet Boom, in my opinion, in this game have not knocked them out of their comfort zone. Yeah, and I'm not that the Kunkka hasn't been good. I know they've lost both games, but three games in a row they're picking this hero on Miera, yeah. which is a shame because I feel like there's a lot of other heroes that are still available in the pool that he's very good with, but it seems to be that their strategy is around all the disabled that he provides. But it feels like a lot of the laning stages haven't been going their way, and it feels like when you're behind on Kunkka, it just hasn't worked out. Small sample size here, but... Yeah. It's a little bit sad we won't see Centaur, in all honesty. Yeah, true. Sure. That hero was very high priority early in this tournament. Even in the earlier portion of Group Stage 2, was getting a lot of love and has basically been completely forgotten the last three days. So, always interesting to see that meta develop. Nice arrest from GPK onto Malreen, but he will be okay. This is a lane that, generally speaking, is, I would say, at least somewhat Lina favored, but... As far as Lena matchups go, it's one of the harder ones because she bodies a ton of them in mid. Oh, oh misclick from Malreen! Malreen. Oh, the tower boy. hits, is there. Oh. Right click is gonna hit, GPK. Getting blocked by the trees, trying to get him under the tower, but GPK is the one that dies! Oh my goodness! That is a feels bad if I've ever seen one. And the tips ensue. Oh my god! <laughs> Wow. Just a flat out big mechanical mistake from Malreen, of course, gets rewarded because it's <laughs> yeah, Falcons. Of course. So somehow, this will turn into a win for him as he does get the first blood and he gets the experience too, which is the really big deal there. That is literally unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, it happens to Bet Boom and GPK specifically. And now the pressure will be applied by, applied by Malreen. Oh, Dragon Slave onto him. One more attack would almost have done it with the burn from the Dragon Slave level two. Yeah. But Malreen very careful not to click close to the tower anymore. So then he might just walk into it. All right. Well, that's quite the start. <laughs> that's like it's in the the most way. unbelievable way to get first blood. <laughs> you walk into tower range by mistake. The enemy hero is one hit from killing you. You hide behind a branch. GPK then runs in to chase you behind, and then you still get that. That is the stupidest statement I've ever heard, actually. Hides behind a branch. How yeah. dumb does that sound? But yes, actually Ladies, accurate. Skeeter's going to get harassed. Nice torrent set up. I mean, this is the old school uh, Shadow Demon Kunkka yep. lane that uh, it was definitely a Dota 1 thing, and then into Dota 2 it had its time as well. Kunkka was more of a mid laner, though, at that point. Yep. Specifically a mid laner. Hunk. As a pause from... Okay, I have to give a shout out to Bet Boom. Yep. Uh, let me just click that. Days were riddled with pauses. And they haven't paused since, yep. I believe. Like, every pause has been against them. Yep. And we've cast every single one of their series in group stage two, I'm pretty sure. Close to, at least. Uh, but yeah, definitely a good start here uh, for the mid laner, Mr. Malreen. See if we can take advantage of it. Yeah, any any other heroes in this matchup kind of stand out to you? Uh, I mean, we get to see Mars again. Yeah, that's his signature, otherwise known as his patented hero. Yeah, Amar, widely regarded as the best player in the world in this hero, for good reason. Uh, Falcons were first picking this hero a lot earlier on in the tournament, and then the meta shifted a little bit, but... Usually the way it goes is everything comes back around because then the new meta heroes start getting banned and then Mars will find his place once again. So, yeah, that's the one to watch. I think that the Mars against Morphling lane is is interesting because in theory, Morph shouldn't be struggling too much, but Mars is very good in the very early levels to put some pressure and then stabilize the lane. And even when Morph gets farmed, you generally go these double bracers so you can withstand the adaptive strike harass. So I think both heroes will just generally have a pretty good time for the most part. 
Tokyo will steal a little bit of that stack away. It's going to cost him a leap charge and an arrow. His crit is nothing, giving away nothing for free. And what about the Morphling versus Fen match? We've seen this a lot this tournament, just these two heroes in general. But how do they work against each other when you get to the mid game? Um. Yeah, that's another one that's kind of funny, right? Because Radiant's Morphling, in theory, is very good against Sven because you have the mobility spell. You can itemize well against the Sven, but at the same time, Morphling is always this equilibrium hero where if you miss a beat at one point, you can just get burst by Sven in two hits. So gotta be... Nice torrent. Gotta be careful. Three stacks of Shadow Poison, Tidebringer to follow. Four stacks now. That is a kill for save. Nicely done from Bedmoon. That's the mid lane. Oh, okay, GPK gets what? some revenge. This Very lane is cursed. What's going on in mid? I don't what know. What is happening? But even despite the first blood, Cinderin. Yeah, like how the is CS GPK is winning even. now? What in the world? Right, this is oh. what Bad Boom needed. Yeah. Uh, he has one of them to get off to a better start in the lanes. I think this time around, it's it's definitely looking better than last game. And of course, the kill on Skater is very nice in the top lane, and Falcons get to play against Shadow Demon. That is oh something boy. we haven't seen much of. Let's see if they have the solutions for this hero that has been spotted. winning with every game. They've had it. Toronto Tokyo will be spotted as well, I believe. We're trying to set something up onto Mallory. If they can't get that Shadow Demon disruption, they do get the ward. And now the six minute runes are coming. That we're gonna mostly guess towards the top side is Malreen. Will not get it. It is a damage rune for GPK. Psychic's dead. Yeah. And that's the setup for the Split Earth into the Pulse Nova. So, panel kind of talked about, but disruption into Arrow, disruption into Torrent, disruption into the Split Earth. Just yep. the Shadow Demon can be everywhere and always have a good combo. Very nice pairings for sure. And you also have, I mean, disruption is just an incredible spell, right? Shadow Demon. Generally speaking, when he isn't in the meta, it's either because if it's a push-heavy meta, the hero just sucks against that. Um, and if his laning stage is too weak, then that's also a problem. But it, it kind of feels like this is like... It's been a while since the patch has been this good for the hero. A lot of the meta heroes are these like tanky offlaners that don't like getting purged, that have some key initiation that Disruption is very good at, such as the Mars here, uh, against the Arena to buy time. And... Yeah, if you pick good pairings with it, it's even better, obviously. It's nightfall. 39 and 7 in the CS, so doing quite well in this early stage. Skeeter, eh, it's pretty much the same, actually. Of course, he did die, so yeah. that set him back in the levels a bit. Miero, I think, off to a little bit of a better start that we've been seeing. Not that he's been struggling per se, but I feel like they just... Uh, what would you categorize it as because like I said earlier they, they picked the Kunkka three times in a row. He didn't play it all three games, right? Is that not true? Didn't oh, yeah, GPK, GPK played play it game one. Yeah, so he, he had the earlier Beastmaster, but that also yeah, didn't work yeah, too well because he just got to play into Sven. They do love their Kunkka. Yeah. That's for sure. He definitely is a good hero. Uh, Falcons do seem to have a good understanding of how Radiant to solve it, though. But this time around, maybe, you know, some of the matchups that they had to face in the last, in the previous games, aren't quite the same. This time, you have the Shadow Demon, uh, so perhaps that's going to help them a little bit. Save, taking a beating, but he will be fine. GPK now has the Arcane and his crit wants to play with the Firefly, but he's getting destroyed. Damage set up onto GPK though. Is Malreen trying to finish the job? Can't reach the Laguna. Wait, does he even have it? Oh, he doesn't even have it. He didn't skill it. He's that is true. Four zero, uh, four one two. He's doing so well in lane, but now he's six hundred behind GPK. Yeah. Going for. What do you think? What kind of build do you want to see from him this game? You're gonna see the Stormhammer top. God strength from Skeeter. Boat is coming. So actually does not get the buff at all, but. Still attempting to run away as Crit has a bunch of sticky napalm stacks. Their save is here. As Crit will eventually get disrupted. So what Snake build do I want to see over. on the Lina? Yep. I mean, probably Gleipnir is fine. I think it's a, it's a... His standard build in mid is good against Morph. You could also make a case for the pure damage, this hardcore spellcasting build against Morph. So just blow him out of the map. We've seen Malreen do that one too. 
But in that game, he was snowballing mega hard from his lane. That's not happening this time around, to say the least. So perhaps the stable build here, as Kezo talked about on the panel as well, it is a really well-crafted lineup for Lina to be able to stand her ground. And oftentimes when you have this kind of a matchup overall in the game, it's very favorable to go the right-click route. This is more consistent damage output constantly in the fights. You just really get to play around your allies very well. So I, I think I prefer that one. The Gleibner build, but we'll see. Dyer's bottom Travels for now, of course, attack. standard. Yeah, meanwhile, Nightfall going for the Lincolns. Not too big of a surprise. Lasso obviously going to be a big deal as Amar. Dyer's out the attribute shift. Yet to see the arena yet. He's not leveled it as of this moment. Radiance top tower. The so ward battles attack. ensue, but look oh. like a haste room for GPK. A ward battle between Save and Toronto Tokyo, and they will both lose to no ward. Yep, good attempt. <laughs> both placed the exact same sentry at the exact same time. It's unlucky. Minus 50. That happens to the best of us. It does. My fault, not really pressured this time around. A save in Toronto Tokyo. Hiding by in the jungle, Amar. Catching wind of it, though. Go back away as a result. Of course, we've seen the Skeeters fans so many times before. No team played it better at this tournament, that's for sure. Yeah, no doubt about that. And the one weakness against the hero is just playing around that god strength timing. But it feels like they rarely miss a step when they have that hero. The thing that is especially impressive is that they don't lose with it, and they also don't lose against it. So they understand the value of the hero very well, but they also bring the solutions in the games that they that the enemy team snags it. It's just such an incredibly powerful position to be in in any meta, is being the seemingly one team that has a consistent way of beating a hero that other teams have given you a lot of times and just can't seem to break. Snaking in a bit of a pickle here. Yeah. Gets the frostbite off, but the X will ensure the eventual death. Many people from Betboom on that side. <laughs> the, game, the way this game has gone is so ironic. GPK with a totally tilting death mid, and then he gets five kills in a row, <laughs> including a solo kill. Radiance bottom tower. This, this is not old GPK anymore that would have maybe broken under that pressure from the death. That's fair. He's really recovered nicely. Wait. Nightfall dies to Malreen. Oh Wait. boy. Oh, he got Luna. burst from the fog here, trying to push the tower. <laughs> what? What is up with He this had game? no health. Oh boy. And now he has no health. Yeah. Good, good call, Cinderin. Yep. You'd be a really good play by play. Yep. He's dead. It does feel like that happens like one out of every two Morphling games in like the laning stage. They just get. That's also surprised. known as half. Dyer's middle tower. Thank is you. Under attack. No, just helping out. Could be a good play by play caster. <laughs> yeah, it's being specific. You know, small sample sizes. GPK. He stole a few creeps in uh, a few stacks, I should say, in the Falcon's jungle. Now we'll be getting Dyer's some triangle tower. action here. <laughs> Still, the net worth fairly even. And you can see that a lot of it is on the three cores of Falcons, Radiance despite GPK kind of jumping ahead of the pack. But he's kind of all alone in terms of cores on his team. He does have a good supporting cast this game, though. I think Disruption is a, a an absolutely incredible ability for Lesh to play with. We've seen multiple teams take, make use of that, especially uh, Team Spirit. But I also think, I guess OG had their own variant of it with Lesh, uh, sorry, with Io. It's just having this defensive support to allow you to get off your Bloodstone and to get that reset. It's really powerful. Uh, and Kunkka obviously going to play into that as well with the boat. So I think this is the type of game that GPK can really pop off if the conditions are met from his teammates. And I suppose Kunkka's game is better than last time as well. Uh, Miero was having a rough one last game in that offlane. This time I'm sure he's still sixth but his net worth this time much more matching that of the opposing team. Levels not so much though, Amar level 11. So the level nine of the yeah, boatsman. Oh. Finds a way. Save. Dyer's the cover of smoke, Malreen just reading it like a book though. Dyer's structures are Diabolic fortified. Edict onto the tier one mid, so Bedboom 
Oh, now he's oh. not reading it anymore. All right. Yeah, the book. He's become illiterate all of a sudden. Arrow is going to hit, but the TP supports have come. Arena placed by Amar onto two. Looks like Crit's going to be taken out first, though, as the God Strength comes Skeeter. He comes to play. That's two supports dead, one on each side. Tier 1 tower now falls in favor of Bedboom. Looks like Falcons are on the retreat. That's a lot of stacks on the Malreen. Arrow. Oh, oh, it actually does hit onto the Sven. The leap in from Trondotokyo. A nice LSA from Malreen. Gets the Laguna Blade. They punish Trondotokyo, but Skeeter eventually falls to Nightfall. That sounded weird. Now Mar. Gonna get chased out. Not often we see Skeeter die at this stage of the game center. That's one of the few yeah. things that... Uh, or not the few things, but... One of the main benefits of having him is very stable carry. And he always comes at the right time in these early engagements. A lot of carries will either stay out or get too involved, but he seems to be the one walking the line very nicely. But this time, he does fall. He did also have one death around this time in game one, in fairness, I think, on this fan. But that time around, he was top net worth. And this time, it will be a bit different. I also wonder if the dynamic between Sven and Lina is going to be quite different from the previous ones we've had with how they overlap in farming patterns. Lina actually likes to push out mid and then maybe get some of the triangle sometimes, but Sven really wants to claim that for himself. It's why in the past, a lot of the time, lineups that have had like, let's say TA plus Sven, for example, can get very awkward because both heroes are a little bit on the more passive side and, and kind of want to play the map in a somewhat similar way. Um, don't know if that's going to hamper Falcons too much right now, but it is a, a possible Dyer's problem for Skidder. And Malreen is going the full-on caster build. Okay. So we'll All commit right. for the Ags at this point. As we said, great against the Morph. It's great for bursting the Shadow Demon. And of course, against a hero like Lesh, you want to take him down 100 to 0 and not let him heal up with the Bloodstone. But I really thought Dyer's the Gleipnir was going scanning. to be the approach in this game, given how the Falcon's lineup is built with the Arena as well as the Lasso. But I guess one another way of looking at it is if you just lasso someone, you can completely obliterate them if they don't get disrupted. So yeah, both builds are good for different reasons, and this is the path he has chosen. GPK though, talk about a lead when it matters the most. Absolutely, really coming together in this game. He has, uh, he has Kaya Bloodstone and the BK. Oh, not quite for BK. He's gonna finish the SNK, I suppose. He's really relying here on save, which is a good player to rely on, I would say. Probably getting the BKB after this, you would imagine, but it's, I really like the Kai Assange choice here. I think it plays much, much more into the power level they're on in the game right now. But probably would be a mistake to never get a BKB this game. I think maybe that's a little bit of a stretch. TP from Malreen, if they see this. He has his axe, they see Toronto, Tokyo gets they the see no, nope, not they quite. Don't they don't see him. A good attempt, Cinderin. They see him. They don't see him. They now see they him. see him. Malreen, they see LSA, him. going for the blood, but a nice disruption onto Nightfall as Malreen using the ability to walk over cliffs. Very nice to the cricket taken out first inside this arena. He's gone onto Malreen, but now he's stuck in the low ground. Doesn't have his slave cloak anymore. His Skeeter, he's going to get stunned in the midst of this God Strength, trying to play everything to this Lash Strength, but the Slit Earth is there. The spear away, trying to buy some distance. Malreen ended up falling to Toronto, Tokyo, so ends up being a two for two. Pretty even fight. That is a position one for position two. Yeah. Boy, that was... <laughs> Definitely thought they had vision. You had me convinced for a while. It really looked like Toronto, Tokyo from that angle would get a glimpse of the lean in the trees, but somehow not able to find the angle still. As soon as Malreen even took a step forward, they immediately reacted on that and got the counterplay going. Falcons only finding that two for two exchange. And with Sven being involved in these moves, he is, keep in mind, he's not farming. And if these fights, are like Collector on Mars, if these fights even, you're not really, you're not too happy as Sven, I think. How does he get it every game? Every game. Some people are just born lucky. Yeah. We had this conversation before. It's three cores here for Falcons. Nightfall. LSA is going to oh, hit. No, he didn't get it all. As well. And the. Yeah, he's dead. I thought the Lincolns might be enough, but they get the perma stun as Skeeter. Going to be found by save. Toronto, Tokyo in the vicinity as well. GPK trying to catch up. Disruption will slow things down, but Amar, he wants to fight GPK. Arena is coming for him, but a nice stun to start things out. Toronto, Tokyo can't quite get inside. GPK doing so much damage, but Skeeter blows up Miero. 
now GBK kind of stuck inside of the arena. Radiance bottom so Falcons getting away attack. with murder, two kills to their name, and they lose nothing. It's such, it's such a clean Morphling kill too. Their lineup has two stuns that don't proc Lincolns, and one of them pins them to a tree and gives them plenty of time to break that Lincolns, and the other one has long cast range with the flame cloak from the trees. Radiance so really, is under attack. a beautiful kill from them there. They get the chain stun into Stormhammer to break Lincolns so they can Laguna with the Ags. Follow-up fight, just barely escaping on crit, getting out of that arena, which is obviously on his team, but he's escaping the Lesh by flying away. You had your chance, Light Collector on crit. Yeah, Light Collector on crit. Radiance bottom tower Very nice. Spot. Bad Rider loves that, because he's a hero, <laughs> and therefore it's good on him. <laughs> it is good on him specifically, of course. Yeah. All right, so 3k lead for Falcons, and when we get to the, the Roche timer, which you know, getting it around that time. Uh, do you give a team advantage in taking it and or fighting in the area? I think it's pretty even. Uh, Morph is quite good at taking it, and Lesh can do some decent damage too. And in terms of area protection, you've got the Kunkka, who's very good there. Uh-oh. Good deny from Snake King. It'll cost him his life. But GPK getting that, that extra spell amp would have been pretty damn good for Bet Boom. Now a BKB online for Amar. I guess the side of Falcons aren't particularly good at killing Roche when Lina's going cast her build, because you kind of have to pop God Strength for it, and then if a fight breaks out, it can get really bad. Uh, whereas for Betboom, it's a little bit lower commitment. You just tank it with the Lesh and the Morph goes to town, so. Falcons are going to have to itemize something uh, for Lincoln's Breaker. I mean, Frostbite has pretty low range. Wait, what? What? Amara's queuing Scotty? Really? I mean, you're against Morph huh. and Lesh, so I get the idea of the healing reduction, huh. but this is a very unusual build on Mars. I don't know if he's going to commit to it. A lot of the time when we see Amar, he's very creative with his item builds, but just as much as he buys crazy stuff, sometimes Red. he doesn't buy them. Opener onto the Shadow Demon, and Skeeter and company should be able to get the Tier 1 now. Let's see if he commits for that, Scotty. That would be very interesting. Oh, Arena, oh, finds the opening. GPK. BKB popped as oh. well. Oh, the spear actually didn't hit. It looked what? like it did. That was really strange. As Nightfall and company actually looked like they want to defend this tier one tower. Now Rain Alex on to two. Flame the follow up with the Luger Blade. GPK is dead. Great find from Falcons. They get the tier one. Toronto Tokyo will receive a lot of damage from Falcons. And just like that, it's a 6k lead. That was fast. I want to see a replay on that Mars spear. I, don't, I actually don't. It think... looked like he moved with the spear. I was... uh, what was that pushback? Oh, he, he hit the, one of the soldiers on the left of the exact oh. same time. The spear just <laughs> genuinely missed. It looked like it bumped him uh, yeah. to the left. That's why I was also confused, but it wouldn't make any sense. And this game doesn't have any bugs, so. <laughs> it couldn't have happened. Very accurate. Miero and Nightfall will take the Tormi. This is starting to look really Falcon again, I gotta say. Really what? Yep, that's the one. You press the wrong, right button. Save, gets his shard. So how good is Cleanse this game? Takes off the fire from Dragon Slave, Sticky Napalm. Frostbite. Frostbite. And Crystal Nova. I mean, it's Radiant good against Maiden. Yeah, very sure. good. Not too bad. Tormentor trade off here. are reminded that they have a Tormentor as well. Might as well. Snake King doesn't quite have his attack speed talent yet, so not providing much here in the body. He will be rewarded with Crystal Clone, and that's how he got uh, so much farm last game. Yep. From a free shard. Manta now purchased by Nightfall. Yeah, he's it's still in his quick buy for Amar. Hasn't committed yet. And it's straight. I mean, one rebuke. I mean, if they're lined up, <laughs> I guess. Then sure. And Superman is now online for Skeeter. How many times have we said that this tournament? Mm, probably eight. Uh, same. Definitely more than that. And it's the last on the other side into the freezing field. Skeeter wanted a piece of it. Superman online on Skeeter. That's right. If we weren't able to reciprocate on this other side. As the BKB will be next for GP Tech. Just 
the recipe away now. You're really not much of a memer, but you do like that one. I mean, because the Keck W guy, rest in peace, of course, is a legend. He's... Like, okay. Something makes me smile, which is usually cat videos, and then I'm a fan. You do know Keck is how the Horde says lol in World of Warcraft, right? That that's oh, where it's from. I did not. Okay, if the Horde says lol and the Alliance read it, then it says Orkish Keck. That's where it's from. Oh. So there you go. Today I learned something. So it was actually not Resitas that invented Keck W. It doesn't... Obviously. It's his face that makes it good. Well, then you gotta call him GP Keck W. <laughs> Okay, well, it might be a GP Keck L after this one. If they <laughs> Good one, I like that. Money's Falcons up 9k now. Miero hunting. Uh oh. Our blinks just Not in gonna time. Find and it's going to be. See you later. Through the gates. Everybody's out. Save late by half oh, a the second. The courier, though, they didn't spot it. Sven Courier will survive. Here comes Roche. Roche, yeah. Save. See I you would, later, I, suckers. Would not go through there if I were you. No? Yeah. Dangerous proposition. Here goes Roche. This will take some time. They will use freezing. Okay, freezing kill and god strength, and they'll get it done. And so first Roche goes to Falcons, trying to secure their second 3-0 grand final of this year. Starting to get some, uh, you know, that year of secret vibes. Yeah. Where they were just dominating absolutely everything. But you know what the big counter to those teams is, Cinder? It's Ice Cream. TI? Oh, uh. <laughs> well, yeah. But that's because they get nerfed so much until that point. Yeah. And we've seen that with, not to get ahead of ourselves, of course. But Amar had some issues with that, where a lot of his heroes were nerfed heavily. His pool is getting bigger, though. That's true. I think he's grown a lot since then. So I don't think it's going to be as big of an issue. Skater will continue the push with that Mask of Madness. Aegis. Online for him. Lasso finds themselves a Marana. Radiance Toronto, Tokyo will drop. And the push is a bit of a ruse. He's completely alone up there, and his teammates are making a move at the same time. And the moment they connect that move, Skitter backs off. So they're playing off the lack of knowledge for Bedboom in that situation, where you don't, you can't bank on the fact that Sven is have, has backup, and you also can't bank on the fact that he's alone. So you kind of have to take a guess, and Toronto dying is the best casualty Bet Boom could possibly have there. So, not too bad. Well, he did drop a gem, Cinderin, so that was pretty bad. True. So, yeah, okay, I take it back. That's really bad. Had it been without the gem, it would have been fine. Harpoon for Skeeter. Falcons just dominated from start to finish in this tournament. That boom are going to have to come up with something. They've had more opportunities than any other team to come up with a solution. Dyer's bottom tower Feels like it's only getting harder. Radiant's yeah. middle tower is under attack. It's ironic, though, because the upper bracket finals, that boom should have won 2-0. I mean, you could at least they, make a case that they were they more competitive than they were today so far. Yeah. Because uh, like looking at it at the flip having... side, the game one could have definitely been won by Falcons too in that upper. They were up like 7 or 8k, took a bad fight and lost the game. Yeah. So they could just as well have them been them winning game one and who knows, but, but I, like I agree. I like bringing though. out these aura here, like the, the Beastmaster, the Lycan. They looked good for certain stretches. Yeah. Just not able to complete the game. Skeeter's gonna run into Toronto, Tokyo. Oh, he forces on the leather. It's a doubled Stormhammer. It ends up happening here as Skeeter already at half HP, though. That's gonna be Aegis. Wants to hold on to that BKB. Why did he not BKB that? He's gonna try to BKB oh, now. Arrow's arrow. gonna not hit. Now they're gonna try to turn this around on to the last track. The Laguna Blade is there. Pops the BKB and the Plus one that's keeping him alive. The arena is making it very awkward for the rest of Bedboom to try to connect with their team. But the first is there to find Malreen. And now Nightfall has to go to work. Double kill for him. And now Snake King running away in the cover of Moonlight. Be able to get this wisdom root, but he <laughs> oh. will end up dropping with that X. Oh, another glimmer comes out from him. No. Do they guess correctly? Don't tell me. Into the trees he goes, and he oh actually my gets God. out. My God. He steals the wisdom and escapes that situation? My God, dude. Okay, I feel like if we get a replay of that, I think if, if Skater BKBs on the initiation, they just win there, that fight completely. Because 
we've talked about this, you and I, before, that Sven being a transformation here, if you use God Strength on your first life and you initiate, you might as well BKB, because, like, what are you going to do in your second life? With it? Is it going to be enough? You connected on two enemy supports with your stun. It's an amazing setup for your team to follow through. You're going to see it here. So here, if you BKB's here, right? Yeah. Toronto's dead. He's probably going to kill the SD as well, and he's not going to lose his first life. And then, sure, your BKB is going to run out, but you're not going to die. So you have your God Strength up, ready to play the fight. Oh, with another team. fight. We have the lasso connection onto the SD. Skeeter trying to kill him off, but the disruption comes in. Save eventually will fall, though. And now Falcon's looking for blood. Mirror on company on the retreat. The torrent's low there. Mirror still with the God Strength applied. Oh, GPK harpooned in. No BKB there quite yet. Is the arrow's actually going to connect onto Skeeter? A bar gets up the arena onto two. Oh my God! He is ready to delete Nightfall out of nowhere. And GPK trying to get something out of this fight, but they have the burst for him as well. Oh, that spear! I think Nightfall oh was really God. expecting that spear to get onto the Lesh. He didn't react in time. He just got caught without using attribute shift. He has Manta ready. He has BKB ready. He has everything. He just got killed with one spear into Dragon Slave and a couple of hits. Oh boy, that's... <sighs> Can't have, you cannot make mistakes like that against Falcons, yeah. that is for sure. It's the eternal curse of Morphling as well. Against so many stuns, at some point something's gonna catch you that you aren't expecting. You really gotta be on your toes or out of the way when this initiation happens and then come in later. That way is pretty much the worst possible start to the fight for Bet Boom. And then Lesh can do everything in his might, but never gonna be enough without the morph at this point. You're this far down. Yep, and now for Falcons as they mount a 17k lead at 30 minutes. It's just a, a waiting game for the old Roche. Invisibility. Nightfall and company, I feel like they're going to have to try to contest, but Malreen, cover of invisibility rune, they scan out. They know someone's there. Looks like, some, oh. okay, a little poke, <laughs> poke and run. Very nice. Of course, Malreen back, not sure how many heroes are back there. Playing it safe. That's uh, a... <laughs> Slow deaths. Nice efficiency from snaking. He's leaving his little ice poops everywhere he goes. Oh, that's a way to look at it. I never thought about it that way. For good reason. Because it's really fucking weird. Okay. Yeah. Well, no offense. Uh, <laughs> can't say that afterwards. Two centuries <laughs> place just in case. So Falcons. I mean, what, what can Bet Boom do here? Do you think that Roche when it inevitably comes for Falcons that they have to contest, or is this a high ground, hope for the best kind of scenario? Uh, I don't know. I also don't know if their read on the game is accurate with what the game state is. Like, uh, I don't know if they think they're 18k behind and if the game is in this bad of a spot, because if they do, I think they would be convinced that the way is to just go and fight at the pit, try to contest that Aegis and somehow find a good fight with your Lesh. If they don't, they might feel like they can ride it out and eventually get somewhere with their Morphling. It's been a very quiet game from Nightfall. I don't know if this butterfly is going to change much. When you have to go triple defensive item like this. Mar did get the Scotty, by the way, in case you didn't notice. Crit leading the way on the cover of Smoke Miero is going to get lassoed. Brought back. Disruption is there from save. He gets deleted by Malreen as GPK jumping in. But the BKB from Malreen will keep GPK at bay. And Nightfall stuck inside the arena, but will be able to wait for him. They will be able to get Mars in the end. Good start here for Bet Boom. Can they get more? They get the connection onto the spin. Already at half HP. But going to get pushed to the other side. A Torrent Storm going to continue on. And he's left all alone. And Great that is a speeder dead for 80 seconds. Ooh. Nightfall almost with the cancellation of the TP on Malreen. As Crit being pursued now by the Waterman. That's going to be a gem drop dropping if he is able to find it, but Crit, Blink, and away. So a good fight for Bet Boom, though. Getting that Sven is a huge deal. And Roche is, it's a minute 20. Two core kills for their Shadow Demon is the best possible trade they could imagine right now. Very good outcome. And this is all because Save has a dagger. Like, without this blink, this is just completely a doomed situation. You would have just lost your Kunkka for nothing. 
because obviously this is the dynamic between Batrider and Shadow Demon. It, a lot of the time it's going to come down to net worth. Bat will get blink force. He'll grab someone and push them away or pull them away before you can react on SD. Flame break, trying to steal it. <laughs> steal his own tormentor. Miara will get the tidal wave. Okay, so... Haven't seen Conkers buy that as much as I thought we would. Yeah, so I agree. The time they just wait for the money to come in freely. Bepum showing a little bit of life now in this game three. Dire are scanning. But they still need more. Radiant are scanning. Now Reen. On top of that Ags now has a Sange Kaya. Has an Aether Lens as well. We have the Moonlight Shadow. That boom. being drawn, or whatever shape you want to call this. By its that is a shape, that is true. Crit also leading the way, he finds the lasso again onto Miera, the Laguna Blade, the disruption is there to try to save him, but the cleave from Skeeter, the lead save to start things out. Miera does get his spells off this time. The Nightfall stuck inside the arena, that's a lot of damage being applied as Miero drops first, so two dead already for Beppo. They lose their Marana as well. And Snaking with that freezing field, keeping Nightfall away as Amar continues to apply the Scotty on top of him. GPK looks like he'll at least get Snaking, at least you would think so. The Lightning Storm finishes him off, but the big kill is Nightfall again. And now GPK surrounded, Rebuke is there. The arrow to try to help him out, Toronto Tokyo has pretty much nothing left in the tank. This is the death of GPK again. Four for two. So Skeeter is getting killed in these fights, but Beppu just can't find much more. It's five for two. Toronto Tokyo even fought back in that. Okay. So it was a full-on team wipe side of Falcons. And yeah, despite them really, they're fighting back against Skeeter. I think this is one of the harder Sven games he's had because he's got four deaths, which is actually high for him. Uh, they are punishing him in the fights, but they have to use everything. And every initiation is Falcons. It's crit getting the lasso, forcing Bet Boom into an uncomfortable position where they try to save their Kunkka every time. Yeah, clearly superior vision as you see here. Very dark map for the side of Bet Boom, just in general. They only have wards bottom here, just which are about to expire. This has not been where the game has been played for the last few minutes, so it doesn't really help them much. Refresher. Yeah, interesting build for war. If you go Scotty, you have the mod for refresh. True. Kind of like Faceless Void, so... He saw that Faceless Void game from earlier. He's like, huh, oh, why not? I guess if the Scotty is good enough against specific enemy heroes, is actually a kind of interesting how, idea. How long does the Scotty but... last for when you hit someone? It's like three or four seconds? Uh, I think it's, it's three. Three seconds. It's three on both ranged and melee. It's just the numbers that are different. All right, into the pit Falcons goes, and I don't think that it will be contested. This is the Aegis and Cheese. Freezing field again being expended for this. Oh, the Aegis on Skeeter now. Gonna be even tougher to kill him that yeah. second time. And the one thing that Bepu have going for them, not much of course, as GPK will get his shard. That's gonna be great for high ground defense. Yeah, that's a good one. But when you do kill this Fen, they Falcon's not really comfortable pushing. And this is not a physical damage Lena. Right. But killing Sven twice now is going to probably prove to be quite the problem. If you consider how much they have to drop for the first kill, having to do it twice over now, let's see what tier 4 neutral Skitter gets. Really thinking about it, I wonder what options he can have that makes this a difficult choice. Alright, he's gonna go for the Mindbreaker. Hmm. Definitely not his first choice. Not bad though. Now the high ground defense is coming from Bed Boom. They don't have the techies this time. That is their bread and butter. They try to delay these games. But they do have the disruption. And of course these split earths that get massive, especially now that you have the you've had the bloodstone for a while, but these things are huge. So Tokyo getting some vision here. Instant the award. Yeah, adding insult to injury is they will Moonlight Shadow. Snaking with the attack speed talent with a really fast D ward. And crit continually has been finding these lasso initiations. Can he do it again? Does he even need to do it again is really the question. 
Bat Boom have yet to find a solution. The longer they wait up here, they're not getting any farm. Falcons are doing just that, spreading the map. Radiant Nightfall still too scared to go for the Ancients even. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Satanic now there. That's probably what they were waiting for for Skeeter. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. The chances here for Bet Boom, Cinderin. Yeah, the Bet Boom button doesn't work. <laughs> that, um, that was a good attempt. That's quite telling. <laughs> Uh, Let's try the other one. All right. The okay, they both oh, broke. They just they they had enough of our shit. Okay. Should have never given us these. <laughs> Refresher on the Lena. Welcome. Oh boy. To hell. She's gonna Radiant's blast one hero out of the game attack. with double E Blade Laguna. Hmm. Flame Cloak running. She can one shot combo Lesh. Now. So Radiant's yeah. Top tower um, even tougher job ahead for save. <laughs> going to have to protect the initial target without dying himself because you could just turn on to him instead. Alreen has become an absolute monster once again. This guy doesn't seem to have a bad game. Like, I... I'm trying to think of a game this tournament where I was like, man, Malreen does just did not deliver here. And even when they've been losing, which is very few games, of course, in the group stage two, they lost... Games? Group stage two, they lost one game. They lost one game. And it was to Aurora. Yeah, so they went 14 and 1. And in the playoffs, they've lost one game to Bet Boom. Which yep. means currently at game group stage two and later they're 18 and 2. Yeah, not bad. That's not bad. crazy. It's actually just a ridiculous stat line. Classic 90% win rate. Yeah, they just fell on another level entirely. Question is how how fast can some of these other teams catch up to them? Nightfall's gonna be spotted here in just a moment. Amar leading the way for the time being crit. Trying to go for the lasso, but the wave form away. Shadows take us. Radiance top tower is under attack. Falcons just biding their time, taking it slow. Aegis, only 30 seconds left, so they haven't really tried for the high ground yet. Perhaps not comfortable. I mean, are they waiting for a specific item, you think? Or a level? I mean, they are kind of close to a bunch of 25s. Maybe that has something to do with it? Um, I think they know that they're out farming the enemy team massively. So if Bet Boom aren't going to make a move, you're just going to win more and more. You don't have to go high ground with this kind of lineup in this situation. And Bet Boom know this as well. So they are eventually going to move out of their base with the Aegis close to expiring here. They will try to get some ground back. Effectively, Falcons converted this Aegis into 6,000 gold of farm on the map. And they can keep doing this. If Bet Boom don't take initiative, don't force them to stop farming more than half of the map. Every passing minute, they will be expanding the lead. And yeah, they are five manning right now on Bet Boom. That means less farm, even when you're able to exit your base. Meanwhile, Falcons have control of literally every other side of the map. Malrin going back to base. What is he even waiting for? He has Arcane Rune. This feels like a decent time for him. He wants to consume his Ags, I would assume. Um, probably replace the bottle before you consume the Ag. Oh, yeah, never mind. He has a Refresher. Yeah, you're right. You should probably, I guess, Synth into Overwhelming Blink, maybe? Could be a thing. Okay. Radiant's bottom no. tower is under attack. Radiant are scanning. Scan comes out from Bed Boom, but really inside the radius at the moment. Skeeter gonna get active. They pop the drums. Onto the high ground they go. Brent looking for a connection. Flame Break will not hit. He already uses. Okay, Laguna Blade already applied to him. E Blade after the fact. He kind of played as slow as Amar comes in with a massive spear with the arena as well onto three heroes. And here comes Skeeter, the Superman himself. 
Disruption will delay things a bit as GPK on the run, but now he gets lassoed back into the fray. Laguna Blade used to delete save as GPK left all alone. Lilith is doing pretty good work. Frostbite into the final rebuke. Down goes GPK again. Amar with his second arena into the spear, into the death of Toronto, Tokyo. Falcons, they lose nada. And this Peter is gonna company. cost more than just one buyback. Oh yeah. They only have the one buyback. Well, they already used saves, so. Skeeter. Hitting that tier three now, trying to finish the series 3-0. Double spear. Buyback onto GPK. Nice splitter thought to three heroes. Do they have any follow-up though? Not yet. Looking for the X, but he's not in range. But Amar wants to come back in potentially. Look at the plane and the lasso. The arrow melts. And now the spear onto the lash. GPK is going to get disrupted as Nightfall trying to apply a little bit of pressure to Amar. is getting quite low. Skeeter getting kited. Does not have God Strength anymore. LSA hits on onto only one. As Nightfall turned into Sven temporarily, the boat's going to connect onto Skeeter. E Blade is going to try to save him just a little bit here. He uses the Stormbolt as well to try to get away, but the waveform from Nightfall brings him to his knees. Now Falcon's on the run. Disruption finds Mount Rain. He pops the BKB on exit. Tries to TP out. We'll be fine. Bed boom, they technically defend, but they still need so much more than this, Cinderin. They pay they ten, do get Skeeter. They pay ten thousand gold to stay in the game. And stay they will. Look at the damage numbers here. Just lash pumping it out, morphling. Just not there in the game. I really feel like they've got absolutely no value out of this pick. And what happened to it's the Conda? So difficult. Here. Yeah, I don't like that one. Yeah, that's a good question. I feel like Conda might be a better approach in this kind of game with the lineup he's playing with, but they, they just. It's so difficult for Nightfall because he has to invest so much gold in defensive items, and then when the fights actually do break out, he's still. It's really difficult for him to play. If he makes one misstep, we've seen it a couple of times, he just gets burst from 100 to 0. Enemy lineup has well, a billion stuns. Roche is about to spawn. This is actually an opening for Bet Boom. I mean, they're down an ass load. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. A Gaben's ass load. He's oh. even bigger than normal. As Roche will come That's out of the pit. Very insulting. And they will be able to steal this, essentially. Welcome to Copenhagen, Sons Fan. So <laughs> <laughs> this is the Aegis Radiant Cheese and Aghanim Scepter. Who do they put this on? GPK could get the Nihilism if they want. All right. It'll be safe. It's something. Okay, they have the triple dis oh, or the see double disruptor. Old Malrina spotted, pops the BKB and the cloak to get to the high ground. The dust is there. The demonic purge attempting to TP out. He does get out just in time. Now refresh the BKB to the TP here. All right, so Bet Boom giving themselves a bit of a lease on life, if you want to put it that way. You know that famous song by the Bee Gees? There we go again. Which one? Staying Alive? Yeah, or Tragedy. Which one do you think is more fitting? Uh, both combined. All right. Satanic. What's that? Was the choice. See if that makes a difference here. Just really missing that burst damage, it feels like. I'm proud of you for knowing a song. Well, that's an oldie, so oh, it's a little fair. different. Any you know every 19? movie in the world, and you know no video games and no music. It's quite interesting. Wait, fun talent, 66% win rate for the Morphling. Okay, so they're very have a high chance. win rate on level 25. The hero seems to have about a 70% win rate when it reaches that point. Leshrac. Oh, yeah. We'll take the Diabolic Edict. We've seen a lot of the Pulse Nova triggers Lightning Storm this tournament. We'll opt for the Edict. Needs more damage against the BKBs, I assume. And maybe it's also the Hail Mary of if we win a fight, we can end. Mm. Maybe. Part of the consideration. Yeah, and this has been the talent that basically everybody in this tournament yeah. has taken. I think the other one is a misclick who's taken at this tournament. I don't think the other talent is that bad, though. It sounds okay. It's an extra second stun on a 12 second cooldown that is ranged and repositions you. Uh, the win rates are also comparable, right? I mean, I guess the pick rate on the hammer is so low that it's not. Yeah. Perhaps not a. An interesting statistic and in mind I actually don't know how this graphic works if heroes get level 30 if they've technically picked both talents well, the damage room trying to bait oh Nightfall takes it that means Falcons knows that they're in the area oh, arrow Amar. not gonna connect 
Blink out from Amar. Like we've seen that several times this game. Remember, the Aegis is on the side of Bet Boom. It's not one of the best heroes in the game at having it in that Lash. But really, the story is about Nightfall not having much, much impact on this game. And it's something, you know, BSJ has talked about a lot, about this a lot this tournament, the carry versus carry matchups and how important it's going to be for who goes all the way here. If this was your counter pick versus Sven, I feel like it's mission failed, right? Like if this was specifically the reason you picked this hero, considering all of the external factors of both lineups, and it did not do what you had it set out to do so far. Now we've gotten to the point of the tournament as well that you know in a lot of these cases what the opponent's picking. Like you yeah. know there's going to be a spin yep. if it's available. They take it basically every time. Now Tormi for Falcons. Who's even missing a shard at this point? Not the Bat Rider, useless. Shocking. 1,400 net gold injection into the veins of crit. Was that, Tor was that, that. Tormentor worth killing? I mean, I bet you do get gold for it. And then <laughs> every subsequent one you get gold for. Yeah. I guess yeah, so. I mean, I agree, though, that it feels good. I mean, that shard just needs to change. I would agree with that. If it ever feels like it's literally better off not having it because of the network, then follow me. probably deserves a change. Definitely not a support shard. Well, I think Bed Boom not looking to use the Aegis. More of a delay tactic so that we can get to 60 minutes, which I do appreciate. If this ends up being the last game in this series, Cinder, and in this tournament, the tier fives would be a nice way to go out. I would like this tournament to be remembered for the hour-long games. I mean, on average, I wonder what tournament in the past had more. Yeah. This has got to be up there. I'm sure the next patch will uh, change a bit as well to make high ground a little bit easier. Yeah, I definitely think the pace is going to be kicked up a bit. Which Miero's going to be happy about because that means Beastmaster and Lycan will have more play. It's going to be rejoicing in July when it comes out. <laughs> Ringmaster hype! <laughs> that boom, they're going to smoke. Okay, now that the Aegis is gone, they're going to start to look for a fight. Well, Makes sense. Okay. And now they're backing away. It's the next level play. Falcons don't think that is happening since they don't have Aegis anymore. Yeah. <laughs> sure. The next level plays could be considered previous level as well, depending on your perspective. GPK spotted. It's found so many amazing lassos in this game. That's exact. onto the high ground. He's leading the way. They find Malreen. Pops the BKB instantly, but he's going to get broken by the Demonic Purge. Okay. And bursted down. That's a good one. That's another purge. something. Demonic Purge number two. Attempted TP out. Not going to happen for crit. All right. Bet Boom. They're looking to have quite possibly Radiant the biggest comeback back. in this entire Sounds tournament. Back. They were down around 40k. That's a start. As Crit can't believe his eyes, like, I should be playing Shadow Demon, damn you. <laughs> but we're still two minutes away from the next possible Roche time. Yeah. So that will likely lead to the split pushing in one. He's <laughs> level 25. What talent did he take? He's 25. Frostbite duration. Yeah, that synergizes with Crystal Clone, that's for sure. 4.25 second lockdown, 6 second cooldown. Seems good. On Frostbite. But you do have Demonic Cleanse to counter. Yep. Shadow Demon, Dyer's after getting that free Scepter, save has found a lot Dyer's more impact than just that move we saw then. Look at this, some buildings being hit by Bet Boom. it's been a while. They get the Dyer's tier 2 mid, Daedalus now there for Nightfall, he does not hit like a wet noodle any longer. Give but, me your, give me your best guess on win expectancy right now. 31k lead for the Dire. Uh, 94 to six. All right, let's see it. 
52 to 48? That's crazy, isn't it? You're kidding. That is wild. No way. It's because of the comment that I made about Gaben. I take it all back. I'm sorry. Yeah, he really, really hates Falcons when you insult him. <laughs> what? No, no, it's probably because of this. Just can't uh, stand that. Oh, it's that. back. Don't, don't count Bet Boom out. I think a big part of this is the, the matchups later on in the game. Sven will eventually start hitting some trouble in ultra late game, and we are approaching that. I don't know if I agree with the 50 50, but I do think it's quite. It's very unusual to see a win expectancy graph that close with that big of a lead for either team. But there's yeah. no barracks, so that advantage isn't going Falcon's way either. And keep in mind, Amar did not go for any type of a, like a right clicky type build, right? Didn't get the mm -hmm. talent that would have been amazing for the divine brooch combo that we've been seeing this tournament. It's Skeeter, Hero. He's walking right into them. Pops the blade mail and the BKB. He wants to take the fight, but the instant BKB from Amar. The rebuke to follow. Arena now is there, but everybody has the golden item right now. His left track kind of stuck in his own space here. And Laguna Blade number one takes out Miero. Now the arena comes out from Amar. He's broken for the time being, but they have the burst damage. That is the death of Nightfall. And now another. Laguna Blade from Malrain is the only buybacks that are coming out from the side of Beckboom as GPK left all alone for the time being. Zayn gets brought in by Crit as GPK eventually will be right clicked down as well. Miero still wants to fight. Malrain triple kill applied to him right now. Thornstorm comes out. Skeeter falls. He has his buyback, of course. Will he expend it? No. Malrain TPs out in the cover of BKB, snaking in the trees. Or staff TP. He's fine. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of buybacks. It's a 50k lead for Falcons. And unfortunately for Bet Boom, it's another minute on Roche, which and aligns pretty much perfectly with the spin. And this is, I think, a big part of the reason with the 50 50 or whatever you want to call the win rate earlier is when you get this late into the game, the relative difference between this 30k gold and earlier is, is much smaller. Like if the heroes are close to being maxed out, the amount of impact that you can have is way more about buybacks than about the fight itself. And Bet Boom obviously had all theirs, but did not get a good trade out of that whatsoever. The Falcons in a much, Radiant much better position. And if they were to get attack. another Roche. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Actually, I still, I'm looking at, I can't believe that this thing's a 60 40. Yeah, Mar. Like, I understand. Onto the high ground. They don't Radiant have their Sven. Are fortified. And Nightfall just still in the pit, hoping against Gaben's best nature that Roach will spawn. As Miero gets a nice double torn into the boat. He's gonna force out the BKB for Amar. He'll blink oh. out as Nightfall will find a connection on the Snake King. They keep their ranks. They do. So he gives up on the Roach possibility. Roach up in 10 Dyer's seconds. Is under attack. And Malreen is level 30, so. No more XP his way. Nightfall has his refresher to get into this ultra late game scenario. Still three minutes away from the Dream Cinder. In. I think, okay, so in this upcoming fight, if Falcons find two good kills, I mean, they're playing 10v5, right? You just need to find one or two good kills to build up the fight in your favor and you should be okay. Well, just buybacks galore and it's a dire side Roche. The yep, Falcons Roche. should be looking to fight they this. They know it's happening. Amar on the outskirts. Will they get there in time? Toronto Tuggy trying late. to break the smoke. Crit will be seen. Roche is down. Nightfall the gets the Aegis. Do they still want to fight? Amar looks like he does. Gets off the Shivas. GPK is there. Gets rebuked. Arena number one into the spear, but no follow-up. Meanwhile, away from, from Nightfall. He wants to go on top of Crit, but look at oh, that claim! Skeeter deletes Toronto Tokyo and the Aegis in one, two, three hits. And now they get the connection again. Down goes Nightfall, no buyback. That was filth incarnate for Skeeter. It's Malreen looking for some members of Bento on the outskirts here. GPK has to do a, a 180 to get that split arc off. As Miero with that blade now has to try to survive against Skeeter. Nice disruption is going to keep him alive for the time being. LSA is there on the sideline. Amar pops the refresher. Arena number two. GPK is going to be completely ignored as Miero gets rebuked. And GPK TP out, but the lasso cancels it. And now he's surrounded. He does get the kill onto Crit. And the Bloodstone did quite a bit of work, actually. Four steps to the other side. Now Malreen, the Sheila's going to slow him down to a crawl. But it looks like he will survive the LSA on the sideline. Another Laguna. A beautiful disruption. <laughs> will save GPK. 
but in the end, it's basically going to be a full team wipe as GPK surely will die. He takes out Skeeter in tow, finally rebuked down, and now the double buyback from Falcons. It's a five versus zero, as this game might be ending. All they have to do is take one two. Actually, they don't even need to take a two. Yeah, the one from earlier. GG's is called, and Falcons are your grand champions here at Dream League Season 22. They take out Ben Boom 3-0. Very impressive display. And if there was ever any doubt,